Some other key things on the syllabus to know is the late policy. I understand that taking an online class requires a lot of personal initiative and it's really easy to kind of forget to log in for a day or two and then you feel really overwhelmed and behind and you think, oh, well, the teacher doesn't submit except late work, so I'm going to get a zero and I'm going to fail and it just becomes a spiraling mess. So for that, I think that I have a really flexible late policy in Art1280. I have it for that reason, but also because Art1280 is a lot of work. A lot of students take this class because they think it'll kind of be like a fun, I can make a picture kind of Photoshop class. But this is the um, a comprehensive Photoshop class for all visual art and design students to kind of master the foundational skills of Photoshop. So we're going to cover a lot of things this semester. And so I know that it, it, I know it's a lot of work. And so the late policy, I think it's really flexible. So you can submit late work in Art1280 up until the very last day of the semester. We set the last day as the last Wednesday of finals week, and I believe that is like April 30th or May 1st this year, but it's Wednesday by midnight. It's on the calendar that I'll show you. Um, you can submit everything you want late. If, if you miss something, you can, can fix it and resubmit it or whatever. But anything that's late is docked 10% for being late, no questions asked. So you can submit late, but there's a slight penalty to it. The only exception to this rule are what are called skills practice discussions. Every lesson that we complete this semester, and there are 23 lessons, will have a lecture, a skills practice where you play around and experiment with whatever we're covering, and a knowledge test. And those skills practices are, they're not, they're like low pressure. They're not to make sure you're doing it right or wrong. It's for you to try it and for me and or your classmates to say, oh, that's awesome, you're doing it really well, or to say, hey, you forgot X, Y, and Z, and for you to kind of experiment and fix and, and resubmit and, and figure out why it's not working, so that at the end of the module, when you have to work on a creative project that applies these skills that you're learning, that it won't be burdensome to learn how to apply that skill, you'll be thinking more along the lines of, how do I want to incorporate that skill into the project? So because those discussions are interactive and the purpose of them is to interact with your peers during the week that we're working on them, you can submit them late like everything else, but you can only submit skills practices late through the end of the module. So if we're working on module five, you have until the end of module five to submit all the skills practices for module five. And there's one per lesson, so there might be four or five of them that need to be submitted by the end of the module. And as a general rule, I'll leave it open for one week after the module ends so you have a little bit of a window to play catch up if you want to. Every class that you take will have learning objectives. Art 1280 is not different, uh, but it does have two types of learning objectives. We have course learning outcomes or course learning objectives. Those are broad topics that we are aiming to achieve and how you achieve them is up to your teacher. So every student that completes R1280 will have the ability to define, identify troubleshooting methods, and implement strategies for color management. How your teacher chooses to accomplish that goal is up to them. What I've done is I've taken these five broad goals, you can read through them, and I have broken the course down into a series of modules, modules one through six. Module one does not count, it's not a real module, it's explaining how the course operates. But starting in module two, you'll see that there are a lot of individual learning objectives and these are synced to the lessons in the module. So module two is lessons one through five. Lesson one is intro to color management and so the learning objectives for intro to color management are Students will be able to launch Photoshop. They will identify color modes used in Photoshop and their relationship to the channel's panel. They'll define what color management is and identify common color management techniques. You will explain the importance of color management for both print and web images. That's what you'll do on your discussion. And then um, that will wrap up lesson one. And so what we're going to do is every lesson will have maybe four or five or six smaller, more attainable objectives. And by the time that we complete all of the objectives outlined for the entire semester, you will have not just accomplished the course learning outcomes, these broad outcomes, but we should have like knocked it out of the park. We should have like, like covered it a uh, hundred times over and then some, and you should feel like you have mastered these course learning outcomes.